Hi everyone, welcome back. So today I'd like to talk about positive definite matrices. And specifically, we're going to analyze uh, some several properties of positive definite matrices. And specifically, we're going to uh, look at why each one of these following statements is true. So first off, uh, why every positive definite matrix is invertible, why the only positive definite projection matrix is the identity matrix, if D is a diagonal matrix with positive entries, show that it must also be positive definite. And then lastly, if S is a symmetric matrix where the determinant S is bigger than zero, show why this might not necessarily imply that it's positive definite. So I'll let you think about these uh, for a moment, and I'll come back in a second. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. OK, so let's take a look at part A. So part A is asking uh, why every positive defi definite matrix is invertible. Well, let's just recall that if A is a matrix, and if A is invertible, then this necessarily implies that the determinant of A is non-zero. And I'm going to just write out dead A as the product of the eigenvalues of A. Okay. So lambda 1 to lambda n are the eigenvalues of A. OK. In addition, if A is positive definite, what does this say about the eigenvalues of A? Well, it says that each eigenvalue of A, lambda 1, lambda 2, dot, 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 to lambda n, each one of them must be bigger than 0. So this, this statement that each uh, eigenvalue of A is bigger than 0 is completely equivalent to A being positive definite for symmetric matrices A. OK. So if I have a whole bunch of eigenvalues, and each of them are bigger than 0, what does this say about dead A? Well, I can take the product of all these eigenvalues. And of course, the product of a whole bunch of positive numbers must also be positive. So if the quantity is positive, then it certainly can equal 0. So this proves that dead A is not equal to 0. Hence, A must be invertible. OK, so for part B, we're asked about uh, uh, to show that the only positive definite projection matrix is the identity matrix. OK, so again, how do we tackle this problem? We're going to look at the eigenvalues. So remember, if P is a projection, what does it say about the eigenvalues of P? Well, it says that the eigenvalues of P are either 0 or 1. So this is point 1. Point 2, if P is a projection matrix, sorry, if P is a positive definite, what does this say about the eigenvalues of P? Well, as I've noted before, it means that the eigenvalues are bigger than 0. So if P is a projection and it's positive definite, the only uh, possible eigenvalues that are both 0 and 1 and bigger than 0 are 1. So the conclusion is that the eigenvalues of P 
must all equal 1. So which matrix has eigenvalues 1 and is also symmetric? Well, the only matrix that satisfies this property is the identity matrix. Now, you might ask, how do you actually show that? Well, you could argue as follows. If p is diagonalizable, and every symmetric matrix is diagonalizable, so I'm not, I'm not making this up. So if p is diagonalizable, then you can always write p as some matrix u times a diagonal matrix. And we know in this case, the diagonal matrix has uh, eigenvalues 1, so it's actually the identity matrix, times the inverse of the eigenvector matrix. But of course, this is just u times u inverse, which then gives me the identity at the end. So u times the identity times u inverse. This is just u times u inverse. And of course, u and u inverse collapse back down to the identity. So this shows you that the only matrix that has eigenvalues of 1 is the identity matrix. So that's just to cross all the t's and dot all the i's. OK, for part c, we're given d as a diagonal matrix with positive entries on the diagonal. Now we have to show that it's positive definite. OK, so let me write d as follows. I'll just write it like this. I'm going to use a compact notation which is sometimes seen diagonal d1, d2, dn. Okay, So d is a diagonal matrix whose elements along the diagonal are d1, d2, dot, 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 to dn. Okay, Now, what does it mean for a matrix to be positive definite? Well, it means that for any x, for any vector x, x, I have to look at the product x transpose d x, and I have to show that it's bigger than 0. And I should, I should qualif qualify this and say that the vector we're looking at is x not equal to 0. So we're not looking at the 0 vector. But for d to be positive definite, we have to show that x transpose d x is bigger than 0. This is just one, one way to show that it's positive definite. It's not the only way. So if I write x out using components, x1, x2, dot, 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 to xn, and I'll write it like this, then you can work out the quantity x transpose dx. And we see that we get a sum of squares. We get d1 times x1 squared plus d2, d2 x2 squared plus dot, 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 plus dn xn squared. Now, by definition, each coefficient is positive. A sum of a square is positive. So, or, uh, sorry, a product of a positive number with a square is positive. And then, of course, a sum of positive numbers is going to be positive. So this means the whole thing is positive. Now, there's other more uh, uh, efficient ways of getting at this using other tricks we know. For example, if we're given a diagonal matrix, we know its eigenvalues are already d1, d2, dot, 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 to dn. And we know that a matrix with positive uh, eigenvalues is already positive definite. So, but this is, this is kind of starting from, from the base uh, to show that it's uh, positive definite. OK, and now lastly, let's look at part d. So S is a symmetric matrix with dead S bigger than 0. Uh, show that S might not necessarily be positive definite. So there's lots of counterexamples. I only need to construct one. So I'm looking at S, which is a symmetric matrix. So I'm just going to throw in some numbers on some off diagonals. So I'll just pick one. And now I need to pick some numbers along the diagonal. And the easiest way to do it is just to pick two negative numbers on the diagonal. Because if, if there's a negative number on a diagonal, then we know s can't be positive definite. And I'll say more about that in a second. 
So I can just pick negative 2 and negative 3. So let's quickly check what dead s is. Well, it's negative 2 times negative 3 minus 1. So this gives me 6 minus 1, which is 5. So by construction, dead s is positive, which is good. And then as I mentioned before, if uh, there's negative elements along the diagonal of a matrix, that matrix can't be positive definite. Well, why is that? Well, suppose I wanted to take a look at uh, this, this upper left component, negative 3, and it's negative. How do I show that that implies s is uh, not positive definite? Well, what I can do is I can look at the, the product x transpose s x. And what I do is I look at it, I just take one value of x. So we know that this has to be positive for every value of x. So I can pick any value I want. So I can take x, say, 1, 0, transpose. And when I do this, we end up getting that x transpose s x is equal to negative 3. So notice how by taking 1 in the first entry and 0 in the second entry, that picks out the upper left corner, negative 3. If I were to take 0 here and 1 here, it would pick out the negative 2 entry in s. So by picking 1 uh, in entry i of a vector x, and then computing this product x transpose s x, I pick out the ith element along the diagonal. And since that element is negative, this shows me that along the direction 1, 0, the product x transpose s x is also negative, and hence s can't possibly be positive definite. OK, so just to summarize, we've taken a look at a couple matrices and uh, a couple different properties of positive definite matrices. And uh, notably, we've, we've used the eigenvalues to uh, get a handle of positive definite matrices. And uh, I hope these provide some useful tricks. And I'll see you next time.